Hello and welcome to Beginner's Guide to Linux by Shadowformed Productions. If you've come across this video, you've probably heard about Linux on the internet, or from friends that use Linux, but you don't exactly know what it is. Let's assume that you're a novice with computers. When you turn on your PC, chances are it's running Windows or Mac OS X. Microsoft Windows and Mac OS X are examples of an operating system. Put simply, an operating system is the software that operates your computer. Windows has a taskbar, which you use to run your applications, a file browser that you use to manage your files like photos and music, a web browser to access the internet, and more. Linux, officially known as GNU Linux, is another operating system with its own desktop, file browser, and tens of thousands of different software applications. So here's the big question. If Linux does everything that Windows does, then why would I use Linux as my computer's operating system? Well, there are a few key differences between Linux and other operating systems like Windows and Mac OS. First is that Linux is open source software, which basically means that anyone can change the operating system. If someone doesn't like the way a part of Linux works, they are able to change it any way they like to suit their needs. Because of this particular type of licensing, you see many different versions of Linux, or distributions, available. Each of them are similar, but with their own benefits. And all are Linux. What this means is that you have the freedom of choice to find the version of Linux that works best for you. And believe me, there's a distribution out there for everyone. While operating systems like Windows or Mac OS may suit your needs just fine, if there's something about the way it works that bothers or annoys you, there's very little chance of it being changed or improved. The second big difference is cost. Currently, Windows 8 Pro runs for $40 at its cheapest, and Mac OS Mountain Lion runs for $20. While both are much cheaper than they used to be, you have always been able to download most distributions of Linux completely free of cost, with software improvements and bug fixes to Linux offered free as well. Application software is the same story. Almost all software for Linux is free, from office suites to web applications, games, and even photo and video editors. Another key difference is Linux offers a variety of desktop environments that you can use. Many open source developers have created intuitive desktop environments for Linux that work in their own unique way to help you better interact with your computer. One of the most popular desktops for Linux is called GNOME. They released version 3.6 in September 2012, which uses an overview pane by default to manage your windows and applications instead of a traditional taskbar and start menu. To open a program or switch windows, you would click the Activities button in the top left corner or move your mouse all the way to the top left corner of the screen. Another popular desktop environment is the K-Desktop environment, or KDE. KDE has a desktop and taskbar similar to Windows, but it is incredibly customizable allowing you to make the desktop and taskbar exactly how you want it. You can add a number of extra features to the taskbar and desktop with widgets, which are customizable controls to enhance your desktop capabilities. To summarize, for many, Linux means freedom. The freedom to use your computer how you want it, with as few restrictions as possible. As with learning anything new, there is a learning curve. But luckily, there are many options for trying Linux on your PC without actually affecting your current operating system or data, which I'll include a few options in the details below. So whether you use the computer to browse the web, perform office tasks, graphic design, games, or even as a video producer like me, Linux offers an endless array of computing possibilities.